so the takeaway, uh, what are we supposed to take away from all this discussion of the pineal gland? Especially in that last section, you see that although um, the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy is trying to explain what Descartes meant uh, when he's talking about the pineal gland and how it's supposed to uh, explain the interaction of the body and soul, that there's really no way of sorting it out. It's, it's, it's just um, his presentation is not, I would say, is not coherent. That, that he, he that's, that in some respects, contradicts himself. Okay, and he wants to have it both ways. And this, this is the problem of, of a dualism. Is it that they are connected, or do they just operate independently? Is there a total disconnect? Or, or is there some way in which spirit flows into material form and material flow, form flows into spirit? I don't know. Um, and and so that's that's a good question. But you, you might ask yourself. I mean, when you see, uh, let's say that you look at uh, uh, a cup, and you see that image, uh, and you perceive the cup. What perceives the cup? If I, if I ask you, do you see the cup? And you say, yeah, I see the cup. Uh, what is the I? Like the letter I, I. Like, yes, I am seeing the cup. What is the I in that sentence? I'm seeing the cup, but what is the I? Do you mean your brain is seeing it? Um, but how is it that just things in the brain, uh, things going on in the brain, somehow you think of that as yourself, seeing it? So there is a there is a deep problem here that that Descartes trying to work out, and and he's, and I and I think one thing we have to understand, and I think the details given in that article. Uh, bear out, but maybe the interpretation of the author uh, wasn't so quite so kind. A, a kinder way of saying it is that he was just working on a model. He wasn't saying that this was really true. He's just saying, let's assume this is true. Can we make this work? And let's just keep on working it and seeing if we can modify it and to make it make sense. And that he's not really committed to it being true. It's it's not entirely clear that that, that Descartes was that um, humble. You know, he tended uh, the tone of some of his responses to his critics is pretty overbearing because a lot of people just thought he was a genius and uh, just believed everything that he said. Um, and he seems to get a little testy with people that ask too many questions. Uh, but but I I think a, a generous interpretation would be say that he would to be to say that he was just trying to work out some model that might be true or might be something that gets us closer to an understanding. Uh, and and maybe that's the value of of what he had to say. Uh, but what I want you to take away from this is that there's a real problem here, and it's hard to explain. And, and the way that Descartes tries to explain it helps us to understand how hard it is to explain. Because he, he tries to explain it in a way that would be easy, kind of easy to understand if it worked. It's just we don't have any confidence that he knows what he's really, that he really knows what he's talking about. So he's trying to put it in as mechanical and simplistic terms as possible. But then that doesn't really solve the problem. But then if we just think about it in those mechanical terms, we begin to understand the nature of the problem. 
And so if we think in terms of there's a soul and there is a body, there's this problem, there's one, there's, there's a couple of problems that I want to emphasize. The one problem is that, that I've emphasized so far is what's the connection? How do they connect up? You know, when I move my finger, how is it that my soul makes my finger move? You know, is that a mechanical process or what's going on here? Okay, so that, that's a problem. Uh, when I when I, I feel the coolness at the bottom of this can where the water is, uh, how does the physical properties of of this stuff, these atoms and molecules, how does that make me feel the sensation of cold? I don't. We still don't have an answer for this, right? <clears throat> So there's that problem. But another problem that, that comes up in that discussion from the encyclopedia, the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy is, is the question of whether the mind rules the body or does the body rule the mind? Does the mind, the soul, dictate what happens in the body or does what happens in the body really dictate what happens in the mind? And of course there's sensations. We obviously think of what happens in the body comes into the mind, but are we really confident that just by wanting something, by willing something, I can make the body do what I, what I want it to do? Or does the body seem to have a mind of its own in a kind of way? Um, and, and there is that epiphenomenal interpretation, you know, is, is it just brain activity going on? And then that somehow creates the illusion of a person who's perceiving things, but really it's just the body mechanically moving around and we're not really in control of any of this. Um, you know, and I'll, I'll get into some other, um, some other thoughts as we get deeper into the material that, that'll bring, bring these problems out. But at this point, I just want you to be thinking about that. Um, what is really dominant here? Is the body the real thing that's really happening? And then the mind or the soul is something that we make up to try to explain what the body does? Or is the mind or the spirit really what's real? And then does that mean that the body is kind of unreal? in comparison to the mind, because the soul is what is re what's really important and the body is secondary. Yeah, so these, these are things for you to think about. These are philosophical questions. Um, and so I want you to think about that. And then, um, and then we'll see some, some other ideas about this stuff. <clears throat>